So you've been playing violin how long? I started playing violin when I was 12. 12? I am 50. Um, this violin was made by uh, Sebastian Klotz in 1751 in Mittenball. In where? Mittenball, Germany. Mittenball? Yeah. This is actually one 1751? Of yes. So it's, it's kind of new. Yeah, well, middle age. Yeah. Because they are some violins. For professional that, uh, violins. Yeah. Yeah. They are some violins that are 500 years old, so middle age. Okay. Around probably 270 or something like that. What about your bow? Uh, well, this bow is. Let me get up close for that. It's a Bausch bow uh, made in made in Leipzig, Germany as well, probably 80 years ago. Okay. But I have another bow, which is a French bow from. Uh, but is, is there a benefit to buying an older bow as well? Absolutely. A absolutely. Yes. Okay. Um, they are great makers today, bow makers. Really, really good. But as an investment, you would like to buy a French, English, German bow. Uh, especially a French bow would be a very good investment. Really? Why French? Well, because... Are you French? No, I'm not French. Uh, Where are you from? I am from Mexico City. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's right, you said your name was Pablo. Pablo, was Pablo. and. Yeah, and uh, I, I used to play violin professionally for 18 years. But I am. Who did you play for? Uh, I played for the National Symphony in Mexico City, uh, the State of Mexico Symphony Orchestra in Mexico, um, the String Quartet of the Secretary of Education in Mexico for 18 years. And uh, I am a violin maker and restorer. Are you really? In Atlanta. I have been doing this. Do you just do violins? Hmm? You just do violins? No, violins, violas, cello, basses. Well, I don't make basses, I make violins, violas, and cellos. You and make cellos? Yes. I restore uh, violin, violas, cellos, basses, and bows. I don't care. And uh, I have been doing this for the last 20 years. And I have my shop in Atlanta. I have been in Atlanta for the last 8 years. Before that, I used to work as a foreman in a shop in Salt Lake City. What's the hardest part about making instruments? I would think that the hardest part would be getting to the end and realizing that it's not the, as good as you would want it to be. Because I think that's the artist quandary or, you know, conundrum. You need... You certainly need patience. You need um, many ingredients. It's like cooking. It's not one thing. Are the ingredients expensive or is the time expensive and the expertise? I guess it's the expertise. Yeah. I can make a violin in 250 hours. But it might take me 400 or 500 hours because I want to be perfect in every single of course, detail. Of course. And uh, I have because you're a professional in it. Yes. Uh, I I really think the most important thing is the concept and to understand the wood. If you understand the wood, you know what you are going to develop. Is um, uh, when I make a violin, the first thing I pay attention to is the wood, and from that wood, from the sound of the wood, from the characteristics of the wood, I will decide what model would go better with that wood. Then I will decide what period of uh, the maker I am copying of is going to be the good one. I, normally I make uh, copies of Stradivari, Guarneri, uh, Testore, Guadagnini, uh, 
Chino, Italian masters. Yeah. And then, according to the wood, I will decide the arching of the instrument, the thickness of the wood, and it's going to affect as well my decision whenever I have to varnish the instrument, because I cook the varnish especially for every single instrument. Did you restore this one? Yes. Yeah. So this is part. This is part of your work. This what is? What was the hardest part of this instrument? Restoring it. Uh, what are you most proud of in in regards to restoring this instrument? Uh, doing some cracks and doing the. Can you show me where? Well, it was a big crack here. A big crack there. Yes. How big? Uh, probably it was that long from here to the bottom. Oh wow! Did you have to like take it apart and re-glue it? Yes. Okay. There's a technique, artistic restoration. Yeah, I won't get into the technique part because that's part of your trade. But I must say that this is absolutely a stunning piece, a stunning instrument. I actually had the opportunity to do this restoration under the guidance of uh, a great teacher I had. His name was René Morel. He was uh, probably the most important restorer uh, during the 20th century in uh, New York. Really? He was from France. And uh, I had the opportunity to do the restoration of this violin with him. Very good. Yeah. Well, well, Pablo, would you um, be willing to play something for me? Sure. You can you do it? Can you do it here because the lighting is better? That's fine. I can just follow. Yeah. Whatever absolutely. Whatever you feel most comfortable with. Absolutely beautiful. Was that the, um, I don't know in violin, but in cello, that would be like the harmonic or seventh position? Uh, well, actually, I went, I guess, up to the eleventh position. Or eleventh? There's yeah. eleven positions? Yeah. Well, maybe it's been too long for me, and maybe I am forgetting, maybe there were more positions. No, I think there's seven positions on a cello, correct? Uh, I guess they are more. More? Yeah. It depends okay. what you play. They are some virtuoso pieces that require to go up the even to the end of the finger. What's your favorite music to play? That was beautiful, by the way. I love, that's my sort of music. That's my favorite sort of music, right? Um, well, I was trained as a classical musician in Belgium. I studied at the Académie de Musique de in Liège. The what? Uh, the Académie, Académie de Musique okay. Liège, in Belgium. Um, and uh, I played you know, in symphony orchestra and string quartet for almost 20 years professionally, but I would say like I love to play bar music, cheesy music. Yeah? Piano, violin, and drums. I like cheesy photos and cheesy video too. Well, that's what I really enjoy doing. Uh, but of course, whenever I play Tchaikovsky or Beethoven or Brahms, you know, the experience is, is unique. Absolutely. Yeah. But um, 
I feel like I have much more freedom doing just playing with a piano so or something, old songs from something the 50s. like here. Yeah, well, this is very, very unique. It's very unique. Very unique. I think it leans more towards orchestral than bar, though. Yeah. I, I, I like the concept of playing in a bar. Uh, yeah. You know, with a piano and you know what pieces you are going to play and you can create according to the pieces. And, uh, but, you know, music is a manifestation of the soul. The human soul. And we can express through music, through instruments, something totally different we cannot describe with words. Yes. Yes. That's... It's another facet of the soul, or of art, which is an expression of human soul and humanity. Correct. Um, so, I'm happy doing what I do for this. Well, I'm very happy that I've gotten to meet you, and it was entirely my own pleasure. So thank you, Pablo. Thank you. Thank you.